This is a project for a client and when I finish the project, I'll deliver the tables so I can show you what they look like in the home. You can see it's a pretty simple design. It's basically just a box. The difficulty comes in the hand cut dovetails. This project is also sponsored by Waterlocks. Waterlocks is my go-to finish for fine furniture. It's a beautiful finish and it's very easy to apply. To get started on the project, I started with five quarter by eight S4S Walnut. S4S stands for surfaced on four sides. Joined the two boards together and then ripped and cross cut the boards to size. I've got my second table here, ripped and cross cut to size. And the next step is to start cutting the dovetails. And the first thing I'm gonna do is use my marking gauge to mark the depth of the cut. Then I use a sharp pencil to put a mark in the line just to make it a little bit easier to see. I don't have a nice fancy workbench to hold my workpiece nice and secure so I've made this makeshift jig that I attach to my work table and that seems to work pretty good. I'm using the Jig by David Barron. This is a, a really nice tool. It keeps your saw nice and straight and square while you're cutting your dovetails. And I've used it to lay out where my dovetails will go, and now I'm ready to start cutting them. I'm not gonna go into dovetailing too much because there's just so many videos out there already covering the subject. You can see how the magnet holds the saw right up tight against the Jig. The jig won't allow the saw to cut to the full depth, so now I need to remove the jig and finish the cut. I always trace a line while I have the jig on the workpiece, and then I'll just follow the line. To cut on this side of the guide, I use a squeeze clamp to hold the guide in place. Now I'm going to clamp the workpiece to my work table and make sure it's nice and secure. I get started by lining the chisel up in the marking gauge line and you don't want to hit the chisel too hard at first. Just take a couple of light taps, remove some of the material and once you start to get a little depth then you can hit the chisel a little bit harder. You don't want to hit it too hard at first or the chisel will start to push backwards behind the line. Right now I'm cutting the pins and I like to cut the pins first. Some guys like to cut the tails first. It's just the way I was taught. So I cut halfway through the pins and then I'll flip the piece over and cut the rest of the way. Once I've finished cutting all the pins, I'll use that board to mark the tails. Now this is the critical cut. You want to make sure that you just leave the line. And if you do that, then you should have a nice tight fit. You don't want to leave too much and you don't want to leave too little. I just try to almost just touch the line with the saw blade. And of course, you want to make sure that you're cutting on the right side of the line. You're cutting on the side of the line of the material that you're removing. So just think about it for a minute and you'll have no problem. And with all the cuts made, I'll go back to the workbench, 
secure the piece nice and tight and again remove the material with a mallet and chisel. And sometimes I just like to use the bandsaw to make the cut for the half pin. Just makes it go a little quicker. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So now I'm ready for the glue up. You don't want to use too much glue. You just you don't want to have to deal with too much squeeze out but you do want to use enough glue. So I glue everything up and I'm always ready with a wet rag and I like to use a wet paintbrush to get into the inside corners. Cleaning up the glue while it's wet makes life a lot easier. I've unclamped and sanded both of the tables and the last thing I'm going to do is make a base. This is for the tables to rest on and the base is nothing more than a frame with a little reinforcement in the corners. Well, I finally finished sanding everything, removing the sawdust, and now I'm ready for my favorite part, which is applying the finish. I'm using Original Waterlox. Waterlox is a beautiful finish. I've been using it for more than 20 years. It's really easy to apply. I'll apply the finish first to the bottom of the cabinet, the inside bottom, and then flip the cabinet or the table over and rest it on what I call nailers, which are basically just screws going up through little blocks of wood that will elevate the cabinet off the ground and it will rest on those little screw points and then I'll apply the finish to the rest of the cabinet. It's been a few days and now I'm getting ready to apply the fourth and final coat of water locks. I always like to apply the finish at the end of the day. That way I can come in the next day and the finish will be cured. And if I make any dust in the shop, it's not a big deal. So now I'm getting ready to apply the last coat. I'll sand the cabinet with 320 sandpaper. I always sand in between coats of water locks. You don't have to sand in between coats, but it's something that I've always done. It's just something I like to do. So I'll sand the cabinet with 320 sandpaper, remove any of the dust as the finish powders up, and then apply the fourth and final coat.
here I'm pre-drilling holes for the screws and I like to put a little painter's tape around the drill bit so I don't accidentally drill the hole too deep. I'm attaching the base with stainless steel inch and a half long screws and I've kept the screws pretty close together so I shouldn't have to worry about expansion and contraction. This is a burning pen that you can find at any arts and crafts store and this is what I use to sign and date the furniture I build. All right, well, everything is finished. I'm really happy with the way these tables turned out. I'll be delivering the tables tomorrow and I'll also be installing a small painting. This client is a collector of my artwork and they have a few of my paintings and they commissioned me to make a small painting that would fit into a frame that's built into their mantle. And so tomorrow, when I deliver these, I'll also install the painting. Here are the tables in their new home. And that's a painting of dogwood florals. That's what I call the painting uh, that I made this spring. The small painting for inside the mantle will be attached with Velcro. And here's another look at the mantle with the painting installed and the star above the mantle. And I'll have links to all of these projects in the description. Well, that was a lot of fun having that whole project come together. Uh, it was great to see the tables in the room, the paintings, especially that little painting that fit into the mantle. And all of those projects are made possible by having a great client who appreciates things that are handmade. And it was a lot of fun working with my client this year and then seeing the whole room come together. I wanna to thank Waterlocks for sponsoring this project. Waterlocks is an American company. They've been around for more than 100 years. And if you wanna learn more about Waterlocks and the products they make, stick around for this short video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Kelly with Waterlocks. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this helpful. There are more videos and guides available at waterlocks.com support. With passion and pride, we've been making Waterlocks resin modified tongue oil wood finishes since 1910 by hand using only the very best ingredients along with our original family formulas. Whether it's our original or marine formula, we have a product that's perfect for your next wood project. To us, there is nothing more rewarding than preserving the authenticity and inherent beauty of wood which is why wood enthusiasts everywhere choose Waterlax. Let wood be beautiful.